guys, this is Matthew here from 90 Second Arduino Tutorials, and today we have a different kind of video. We're going to be looking at the Flashforge Finder 3D printer. So this is my 3D printer, and I've had this printer for about three years, and overall I've been extremely happy with the results I've been getting. The Flashforge Finder continues to produce high quality prints while also being reliable through all its uses. So. Just to show off some of the things I've built with the Flashforge Finder, we have a cabinet, and this cabinet's actually made of wood in real life, but to help us build that wooden cabinet, we had to scale it down, and we built a 3D printed model. So that kind of shows the different uses of a 3D printer, and how the Flashforge has been successful. And then over here, this is a robot, a four-legged robot, powered by the Arduino microcontroller that I'm still working on. It's got some moving parts in it. And this shows just how the Flashforge and all other 3D printers can really help you with your hobbyist projects. So in terms of this reviewing this printer, the first category that I really wanted to focus on was the filament. Alright guys, so moving on to the filament here. The filament for the Flashforge Finder is originally located at the back of the printer and it just slides out and this thing, and this is where you can store the filament. However, as you can see, the filament that I'm using right now is not stored in here, but it's still getting into my printer. So I'll get into what I did next, but the reason why I don't use this thing, and I did for about two years, and it worked absolutely fine, but after a while, you can see there, it started to degrade that corner plant where the filament came out of. And it started, it created a sharp kind of edge and the filament would cut itself off mid print. So that is why I don't use this anymore, but I made a very simple solution to help with this issue. So what I did to solve the issue of the filament with the finder was I took a paper towel roll holder right here, secured it to a table above the 3D printer with some duct tape here, and then I can just put any size of PLA filament a spool on top of the paper towel roll holder. And it, work, and it works really well because there's nothing for the filament to get caught on. And that's really nice. So, I can show you guys what's going on here. You can see that the filament goes directly into the printer from that angle. So, next we'll be looking at the user interface with the finder. going to be looking at the user interface with the finder. So the first thing you're going to obviously going to do is turn on the printer. So this black button off to the right, hold that down for a little bit and I'll turn on. It's going to play a little buzzer tone, which is kind of cool. All right. So there, now you're going to see that you have three icons, the print icon, the preheat icon and the tool icon, tools icon. And then the print one is obviously if you wanted to print something, the preheat, I'll go into a little bit here. It heats up to 230 degrees Celsius and is basically, I use it a lot to make sure that the printer is running optimally and that the filament is extruding properly. So that's kind of cool. And then the tools icon, it brings a bunch of different tabs. But the two you'll probably find yourself using the most are the filament icon and then the level one here. And the filament is basically useful for loading the filament or unloading it. And then the level one is kind of cool because it's, it's, um, it has it's assisted leveling. And it has little buzzers so you know when you're, you're hitting the, the right level. And it's basically useful for keeping, making sure that the base plate is stable and that you can have good prints. So that's that. Next we'll be taking a look at the print quality and then also a little bit of maintenance with the finder. Now we're going to look at a little bit of build quality and some maintenance to keep your printer running strong. So just as you can see here, I have a cabinet that I printed out with this printer and a regular boat benchy, both printed out with the Flashwatch Finder. And the build quality for this printer was basically exactly what I was looking for in terms of a high functioning, high functioning hobbyist printer that's reliable. So I'm really happy with it. It's a, it's a non-heated base plate, just know that, so you're basic, I, most of you would probably be, be pr printing PLA off of this printer. And it does a really good job, as you can see here with this Benchy, it's pretty accurate, about 0.4 to the millimeters in accuracy. 
So for some maintenance, first thing is hairspray. I like to use the Aquanet hairspray. It's really good for making sure your models stick and that they don't come off the base plate. If you're gonna if you're gonna spray it down with hairspray, make sure you slide the base plate out just like this, and never never spray your base plate while in the printer because that can cause issues with the function, the mechanics of the printer. So never do that. And then I have some three printer fluid as I call it. It's basically just 50% water, 50% alcohol, and this is really good just to clean your base plate off after get some get the hairspray off of it. And it also it helps remove models that are really sticking down to the base plate. And then my last thing here is just some regular oil that I use. And Basically, I put two drops on a paper towel and I just go over the metal components of the printer to make sure that it's protected and, then it's, and that it's functioning at its highest caliber. Next, we'll be looking at the slicing software with the Flashforge Finder. So taking a look at the slicing or slicer software for the Flashforge Finder, it's called Flash Print and it's free to download when you buy the printer. And as you can see here, I have my Benchy right in the build area, and it has a pretty good diagram of the exact dimensions of the build area on the Flashforge Finder. And then you would say send G code. And I don't have it I don't have it connected right now, but it would show up as a Flashforge Finder, and then you would pit, push connect. And then you could just transfer your STL file over into the printer. And there's two methods of doing that. One is they give you a flash drive right here. And I never really find myself using this because I mostly just like using the cord as, as it's faster and easier. And the cord's right here. This all It all comes with the entire printer. It comes with all this stuff, by the way. And the cord, you, be, you just have it plugged in into your printer. And it connects automatically. And it's super easy. So I really like that and how easy the slicing software is to use. Alright guys, so that was my overview of the Flashforge Finder 3D printer. And overall, I really like this printer as I think it's really easy to use and produces pretty high quality prints. And I highly recommend this printer for anybody who's looking for a good, reliable, hobbyist 3D printer. Overall guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And see you in the next video. Thank you.